Hello, everyone. I am Alina Norato, a master's student at the Federal University of Pernambuco. My advisor is Professor Leonardo Guimarães. And in this video, I'm going to talk about simulation of submarine landslides using the material point method. Submarine landslides are one of the most hazardous geological threats to subsea infrastructures like pipelines and other seafloor structures since they can transport vast volumes of sediments reaching a final runout distance of hundreds of kilometers. These submarine landslides can generate anomalous currents that carry a vast amount of sediment down to the ocean absorbed plants. Also, the slides can cause tsunamis and may release large amounts of methane to the air. The key factors influencing landslides occurrence are the elevated power pressure and also specific quick layers within the stratified sequences. Hydrocarbon production and changes in the sea level can also trigger submarine landslides. The industry usually have a lot of interest on this matter since uh, we already had a previous proposal, proposals and studies done in the university on submarine landslides. Also recently, Petrobras launched a new project proposal, which has the objective of accomplishing a methodology to monitoring the seabed stability. The stability of submerged slopes holds significant importance in various countries since the Submarine landslides can cause and exacerbate damage to shorelines, posing a threat to the safety of the area. Therefore, it becomes imperative to investigate this phenomenon to strengthen the development of effective mitigation techniques. Classical mesh-based methods, such as the finite tenement method, are normally concerned about when the slide starts but it's difficult to capture the whole runout process due to the potential severe mesh distortion in large deformation. The discrete element method is able to simulate soil flows, but its utilization may be restricted due to a prohibitive computational cost. The advantage of utilizing the material point method is that it's possible to model large displacement problems and observe the displacement behavior throughout the whole runout process. In this method, the bodies are discretized as a group of unconnected particles which carry a mass whose value is kept fixed to guarantee the conservation of the mass and the other parameters necessary to define the state of the body, such as stress, density and variables history are also associated with the material points. The inter interaction between the particles in the MPN is made at the nodes of a computational grid, which remains constant for the entire calculation, thus eliminating the distortion problems. A software that implements MPN formulation is similar to the uh, it, it is a software that is research-oriented, developed by the Anura 3D MPM research community. And this community is an international collaboration among different universities that carry out their research on numerical modeling of large deformation problems using the material point method. The Anura 3D is a free open source software developed with Fortran language. The formulation type that we are using is the two-phase single-point formulation. Uh, in this kind of formulation, we have only one set of material point that represents the mixture, which includes the solid and the liquid phase of the soil. And they move according to the displacement of the soil. Uh, here are displayed the governing equations utilized on the two-phase single-point formulation, which includes the mass conservation, the momentum conservation of the liquid, of the solid, and of the mixture. This numerical simulation is an example of a submerged slope. The model is inspired by uh, the simulation of an experimental 
test published in a paper, a small-scale submerged slope is simulated in 2D plane strain conditions applying the fully coupled two-phase formulation. The geometry of the, the problem are given in this figure, and to induce the failure of the slope, a liquid pressure is applied at the bottom of the slope for 0.05 seconds, decreasing the effective stress. Then the applied pressure is switched off and the slope stabilizes. To perform the calculation on the node today, we need first to create input data on the preprocessor software, generate the input files, then perform the calculation and the annular 3D and view the results in the post-processor software. First, we can observe the distance and the velocity of three specific points along the crest of the slope. The material point method allows us to observe the run-out process of the particles of the discretized body, which is exactly what we see here in these two graphs, including the displacement and the velocity over time. This first set of images shows the solid displacement of the particles throughout the run-out process of the failure. As we can see, the red material points are the particles with larger displacement. And in the second set of images, we can observe the velocity of the particles, noticing that they leave the inertia due to the effective stress decrease. And after some calculation steps, they tend to stabilize once again. Here we can see a comparison between the slope failure utilizing the limit equilibrium method and the material point method. For MPM, the solid displacement is used to show the development of the slip surface, while in the limit equilibrium method, the circular surface is automatically generated and the relative factor of safety is obtained. As we can observe, the shape of the slope of the slip of the surface is consistent among of the two models. Comparing the numerical results of the model and utilizing the material point method with the experiment results in the published paper is observed that the numerical results of the deformed slope and in the final equilibrium state are in good agreement with experimental data. We can say that this analysis showcases the capability of the MPN in accurately modeling submarine landslides. I'd like to thank the sponsors and thank you for watching.